Welcome back, Controls Champions, to another episode of the PLC Programming Cookbook. Today we're going to talk about the difference between using a coil versus a latch. And this is all a ladder logic idea. I've sort of talked about it with structured text already, but really I want to focus on it for ladder because it's a bigger deal here. I'm repurposing the motor starter circuit that I've already used in a different example. If you haven't seen that, check it out. I'm not going to explain it in great detail right now. And then I've made it in a different form as well. And these are both equivalent function. So I'm going to talk about the difference between the two and why we might want to use one over the other. Um, I've certainly got some opinions on this and I've heard a lot of other opinions on whether to use this form or this form in any kind of function that you're, you're turning something on and off. So start button, stop button, representation of the motor. This could be any other state of anything that we're turning on and off. Quick review is this is the start condition, these are the stop conditions, and this is the latch. So the standard coil in ladder logic is turning on if these conditions are true, and it's turning off if these conditions are not true. So if this circuit isn't complete from left to right, this function is still active. It's actively writing a zero or a false or an off to this bit here. If we look at the other way of doing this, this is a set and a reset, or in some languages or some uh, manufacturers will call this a latch and an unlatch coil, same thing. This only operates if the condition coming into it is true. So if one of these things is not true and the circuit is not complete, this doesn't do anything. Same with this function here. If this circuit isn't complete on the left side, coming into this coil, this instruction doesn't do anything. So this one only sets this bit to true. When the circuit is complete coming into it, this bit is set true, it's turned on, it's set to one, however you want to think about it. It's, it's latched is another way to think about it. And this one here, it resets it, it turns it off, it sets it to zero or false. So set and reset, that's the concept, or latch and unlatch. So if we look back here again, we had start condition, stop conditions, latch. You'll notice when we come here, the start condition and the stop conditions are both in the, we can consider this the turn on rung. This is the thing that turns the motor on. And we have to do that because we don't want to turn the motor on if the stop conditions aren't in the right state either. So we say, if I push the start push button and I'm not pushing the stop push button and the overload is happy, it's in a permissive state, then we can run the motor. If I'm pushing the stop button or the overload is not in a permissive state, then turn the motor off. And this can be convenient in some cases, because now we can have several conditions that turn the thing on and several conditions that turn the thing off. Um, and that, that can make it a little bit more manageable to parse mentally. That being said, I would generally encourage don't use set and reset. Don't do the latch and unlatch thing for especially simple things. I would encourage using the standard coil as much as possible because I think the set and reset encourages bad programming practices. I see this often used where people will uh, have set and reset scattered all over a program, and that makes it a lot harder to read and understand what's going on in the program. And so maybe uh, it looks elegant when you're doing it, but then when the next guy has to try and figure out what's going on, has to troubleshoot, has to add on to the system, now it's a pain in the butt. And I have found that any little thing that's hard to read or understand will get just get worse and worse and worse over the 20 year life of this machine because a bunch of other people are going to be working on it. And if they don't understand exactly what's going on or something's not perfectly clear, they, they might just kind of put in a band-aid something that works and now it's not in the same convention and it's not following the same idea of what should be happening. And it, it just makes it more confusing for the next guy now. So keep it as simple as possible. Keep everything in the same place. And again, this, this format here just kind of forces us 
to do that. So that's why I prefer this because it's all in one place. I know what starts it. I know what stops it. I can see that it's latching. Another thought here, some people actually say that it's wrong programming practice to use sets and resets. I don't know if that's true. Um, keep that in mind that that uh, thought process is out there. You, you know, this isn't my preference, but there are times when I think set and reset makes sense. And I don't have a great example off the top of my head here for you, but consider that use, use this as your default. Now, something you really don't want to do almost ever. I think I found one case where I broke this rule in my life as a controls engineer. Don't ever write to something with a regular coil and also a set or reset coil. That makes it really confusing for the next guy. Yes, you can make a functional program, but you know where I said some people will say don't ever use set and reset, that's probably a minority of people. Most people will say don't ever use set and reset at the same time as you're using a standard coil. Uh, so that's widely held convention. Don't do that. It's just confusing and it it doesn't make the program better. Again, I found one exception to this and maybe I'll go into that in a different video. One more thing that I'm going to consider in a different video is, okay, sometimes people will approach things with a set or reset versus a coil like this with the idea that it's going to change how the machine starts up from from being powered off. I'm going to say that's generally not a consideration. Choose one over the other based on what the program needs. And we will talk about how the program starts or initializes in a different video. So I hope this helps, helps you think through what makes sense for your application, helps you read other people's code and understand maybe the choices that they made. Do let me know what you think in the comments. I'm always watching those. I want to know what you think and what you're looking for. Do you have questions? Uh, get in touch. Let's make this a dialogue. Cool. See you next time. Thanks, John. The weather is beautiful here at Brain Machine. Looking at the map, we can see a massive subscriber front coming right through here with a high chance of likes and shares. And I would bet you we'll see some comments in the near future as well. Don't miss the great weather. Click here to keep it coming. Back to you, John.